Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs down Bargain Quest. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules, Goose you know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to my shop, everybody, where I am going to be trying to sell various uh, adventuring equipment cards to a wide assortment of adventurers who have come to town to defeat vile monsters. Jen has the same idea over here, and we're going to be competing to uh, draw the attention of these adventurers. Now, each of us starts with five bucks, which is basically a half a point at the end of the game if we don't use this for other stuff. And um, there's a nice little round overview that tells you almost everything you need to know on the last page of the rule book. So, what do we do? Well, step one, there's going to be the supply. And uh, where a monster attacks, if there isn't already one face up. Now, as part of setup, I got a level one, two, and three monster. And we know that the first monster is a restless ghost. Okay. Uh, who requires four total attack to do damage, and you need four defense to avoid taking a hit yourself. Okay. So, that is what... It, our town is haunted! No problem, though, because here come the adventurers. Since I'm playing a two-player game, there are going to be two adventurers showing up. A cleric, who has some nice charity going on. And a another cleric. Wow! Okay, that's crazy. You know what? Let's actually shuffle this up a little bit more. I thought I'd shuffle this pretty well. I mean, this could totally happen, and they were different, but let's just show you a little bit more variety. Oh, what the what? These clerics... Maybe they're married. I don't know. Can clerics get married? I'm not sure. Let's try one more time. How about a cleric and a paladin? All right. Well, they're both still holy warriors of sorts uh, with charity and shield mastery. Okay. These are the two adventurers who have come to exorcise the demon. The cleric showed up in town with 15 bucks in his pocket. Right there. And the paladin is a bit richer. No doubt she's a noble. And she has 25 bucks. Okay, they also have certain uh, skills associated with them. Uh, they're both holy, but she also likes warrior equipment. This determines what they might buy from us. And they also have basic stats of how much damage they do and how much defense they have and their special ability. Okay, so um, the heroes have shown up, the monster has shown up, and now each player gets four items to sell. One, two, three... Four. Now, I should say, by the way, I'm playing the standard two-player rules. There is an advanced two-player variant, where even in a two-player game, four heroes would show up, and each player gets six cards, but I'm just trying to keep it simple right now. So, we have done supplying ourselves, although we now have to do a standard card draft, where I've got Scale Mail, Ice Scroll, Holy Symbol, and Nunchucks. I keep one and give the rest to Jen. She does the same, gives the rest to me, and we keep going until we have our final four. Uh, and after all that is done, we will set up our shop display and try to attract these folks. So what am I going to do? Well, right off the bat, you'll notice these same symbols up here that are on them. The paladin could use the scale mail. The cleric cannot. Both of them, because they're both holy characters, can use the holy symbol or, interestingly, the nunchucks. Um, and so, I'm going to keep one of these. Now, there's other stuff on these as well. Most notably, if I sell them to the character who comes to my shop, how much uh, offense and defense they'll get. And how attractive the item is. The more hearts, the the better it is to woo them to come shop at my place instead of my opponent's. Um, let's see. And we're the name of the game is making money. So I probably want to take one of these two because if I sell it, I'll make fifteen bucks. Because he actually that's everything the cleric has, but the paladin is even more rich. So. I guess I'll go on ahead and take the holy symbol, because if I take the scale mail, which will only work for the paladin, what if Jen ends up having the paladin come over there? Then I can't sell the scale mail to the cleric. So I'll go on ahead and grab this holy symbol. All right, And Jen, meanwhile, she's got to go through the same thought process with her longbow, her wineskin, ice scroll, and steel sword. Hmm. No holy... Oh, no, no. The wineskin... Um, any character can take this, but it's only worth 10. The longbow is, sells for 20, but she could only sell it to the paladin. So if she takes this, she really wants to make sure that paladin comes through the door so she can sell it for 20. So she'll take a risk, go for that, and then hands me the rest. And so now the drafting continues. I look at these, and I think, well, no more holy items, which could sell to either of them. And I will go for the... 
Um, the interesting, the wine skin, I could sell to anybody, but it actually lowers their defense by getting them drunk before they go out and fight the ghost. I'll go ahead and take this steel sword because, hey, if I get the paladin, I could sell it. All right, and then the rest go back to Jen. Jen takes a look at what I've handed her and she says, oh, good, holy stuff. Uh, so she knows she'll be able to sell that no matter what. And we're almost done. She hands me back the two. No surprise. I didn't get those nunchucks back. I guess I'll take... Well, there's an interesting choice here. I'll take the scale mail because I could sell. But again, I might end up getting the cleric, which I can't sell either of them to. But there's another use for these cards, these hearts. What I'm going to do is, after we're done drafting, we then go on to the display phase, where one of the four cards I end up, I'm not going to get to sell. Instead, I'm going to put it on display. And the more hearts it has, the more likely I am to get to choose who I want. And I'd rather have the paladin come because she's got more money. So... I could take the scale mail, but then I might not get to sell it. And it only has one heart, it's not very attractive. If I take this ice scroll, specifically because it's got two hearts, and I'm hoping that that will attract the paladin, then the paladin will come in and buy my holy symbol and my steel sword. Right. So, okay, I will take the ice scroll to up my chances, which means I've given Jen this last one, and then she has her last choice. Um... She'll go on ahead and take the wineskin, because she could always sell it for 10, although it might get whoever she sells it to killed. All right, so that's that, and I've got my last four. So we now have our final four. We're going to do that several times over the course of the game, doing that draft. And, of course, with more players, you know, the draft gets more interesting because you've got more people as it round robins its way around. But anyway, we finished the supply. Now, display time. Choose one of these items. And now... In a perfect world, I would remember everything Jen has. And if I were really thinking about it, I could. Because in a two-player game, you know, that's why you play the advanced game, so there's six cards. But anyway, um, I'm looking at these. I want the Paladin to come to me. She's got more money. And so, well, that means I should use my Holy Symbol. It's my most attractive thing. Three hearts. Now, I'm going to play it face down. I'm going to choose in secret, and so is Jen. And then we reveal at the same time. Three hearts gives me the best shot at getting who I want. But then I can't sell it, because it will have to stay on display. But I'll get to sell this other stuff. Now, um, how did I get two ice scrolls out of this? Hmm. I can't sell either of these ice scrolls. I, I'm going to hope... I'm going to go for one of these ice scrolls. It only has two, but hopefully that'll be good enough. And then I'll be able to sell both of these to the Paladin. We'll see how it goes. Jen, meanwhile, she's looking at her choices. And um, mm, this longbow, again, can only sell it to the Paladin. But it's got three hearts. Otherwise, she's putting up one heart or zero hearts. Which means she doesn't have much of a shot if she tries to attract them with the wineskin. But, I mean, this is the one that she wants to sell because it makes 20 bucks. This is probably the single biggest, toughest, uh, most uh, tension-filled decision every round. What should I give up? I can't sell my best thing. And, of course, as you might imagine, the things that are, sell for the most money are generally the most attractive. If Jen gives this up, yeah, she could get the Paladin, and she could, um, but she'd only be able to sell... And she'd be able to sell both of these, so she'd make the 25 bucks, and she'd hold on to the wineskin, because the Paladin, she knows, only has 25 Doesn't have the 30 to buy all three. Hmm. But there are other concerns. There are other concerns. I mean, she doesn't want to get whoever killed, so she might not sell this anyway, because, well, for reasons that'll come clear when we get to the adventure phase, step four. So... She figures if she doesn't put this out here, she probably won't get the Paladin, which means she'll she'll still be able to sell both of these and make 15 bucks. Uh, and if she gets lucky, she'll be able to sell this. So she's going to take a risk. She's not. She's going to hold on to this to hopefully sell. And um, she will go on ahead and try to use... Oh, oh to heck with it. She'll just go for the longbow. She feels pretty confident about that. All right, so... Everybody's chosen in secret. Now everybody reveals. And two hearts. And Jen says, phew, it's a good thing she chose wisely. Now, if we had both chosen something with three hearts, or if we had tied on the hearts, the first tiebreaker is how valuable it is. So that would become the next most attractive thing. If there's still a tie there, then the final tie is whoever has the first player marker, which I ended up getting it as randomly as part of setup. But it doesn't matter in this case. No need for a tiebreaker. Jen gets first dibs. She says, yeah, I'll take the paladin. We'll come into my shop. Which means, well, I'll take the cleric. But I get a consolation prize. Whoever gets the last character also gets the first player marker. And so I'm going to get to hold on to this for the rest of the round. And that could help out. And hey, I could still hopefully sell some stuff to this guy. 
but we'll see. Alrighty, so we've done with the display. Now everybody can simultaneously sell stuff to their customers. And so let's look at me. This guy, again, has 15 bucks, and I've got three things, only one of which he'll buy, because he only cares about holy items. So I'll take all 15 of his dollars and sell him the holy symbol. And I put this like here to indicate his stats have changed. Instead of having two attack and three defense, he now has three attack and five defense. So he's uh, in a much... Well, he's not going to be able to take her out, because he needs four attack to uh, do damage to her, but she's not going to take him out either because he's got more defense than she does. Now also, oh, whoops, I totally forgot. He has a special power, charity. I can reduce the price of one item by up to 10 while selling to this hero. So if I wanted to, I don't have to sell him at full price. I want to get all 15 of his bucks, but say I reduce this thing by 10, so it only costs five. Well, it doesn't matter. I can't sell him these other items anyway. So I cannot display charity to my paladin to sell him more stuff. Now, why would I want to sell him more stuff if I'm getting the same money? Because I want him to do well. If he goes out and successfully survives his, the assault of the, of the ghost, well... I'll get one prestige because my customer didn't die. But if he survives and he successfully hurts him, then I'll get two prestige. So ideally, I want to outfit him in a way that allows him to do damage and not get killed because I'll get two prestige, two victory points out of it. Now, as it is, I'm only going to get one because I know he only does three points of damage, which is why it would have been nice to sell him something else, which is why if I could have, if I had other stuff, I could adjust the prices to get him more stuff so I'd be able to get more prestige. But as it is, the those, well, I can't sell to him. Alrighty. And so that's that. And Je meanwhile, Jen simultaneously is doing the same stuff. And so she can't sell her longbow, but she will go on ahead and he, um, she will... Well, see, this is dangerous. This is why selling him the wineskin will make 10 bucks for Jen, but he might die because he'll be drunk and he won't be as defensive. Although, this isn't so bad. If she, se she gets all 25 by selling the, the scale mail and the wineskin, so Jen's loaded, and... His defense went up to five, but he's drunk, so it came back, or she's drunk, so it came back down to four. That's still okay. Uh, he won't die. So, again, he's only doing two damage because Jen didn't sell him the nunchucks, which she could have done, but even still, that would have been three. Still not enough to do it. So, he's she's out of money. She's probably going to survive as well. Jen's got these nunchucks for another day. And the longbow. Right, and remember, Jen could not sell the longbow. I could not sell the ice. Um, not that I could anyway. He didn't want an ice scroll. But Jen wishes she could have sold. But anyway, that's it. We are done selling. I've still got two cards. Jen's got one card in her hand. And now uh, it is time, folks, for adventure. This is what you wanted. Each player, um, each hero gets dealt an adventure card. And this is where a lot of swinginess can come in. These stats are not final. You can see there's a whole deck of cards over here that represent attributes that will affect the heroes when they go fight the Restless Ghosts. Let's see what happens. My Paladin, who is currently not strong enough to, uh, to hurt the thing, but is strong enough to survive... Well, it turns out, he's sarcastic. So, he's just a sarcastic cleric, which is plus zero defense. Nothing changed. Let's see what happened with the paladin. The paladin is feeling a bit forgetful. Which, again, doesn't change the stats. But this hero <gasps> discards one random equipped card. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, that could be good. That could be bad for our forgetful paladin. One of these goes away. Hopefully, it's the wine skin. Um, because then I would have, Jen would have made her money, and there's no downside. If it's the scale mail, this paladin is going to die. How does a paladin forget their scale mail? Let's find out, folks. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Pow! Ouch. Bye bye. Well, I guess one too many hits from the wine skin made the paladin a little forgetful, and suddenly the paladin is not going to do so well. Alrighty, so um, they, they each got their adventure card, starting with the player with the quest token, each player fights the monster. This guy goes out and is, you know says sarcastic insults at the Restless Ghost, which only does three, is not four, so doesn't do it, but survives the attack of four. And so I get one victory point for my character not dying. Again, I could have gotten two if I could have done some more damage, but no biggie. And the cleric will live to fight another day. The paladin, the drunk paladin, however, things are not looking so good. Doesn't do any damage. And with her defense... Oh, wait, actually, again, I forgot. 
She is a shield master. Let's look at her power. After the shopping step, if the hero has a defense value of six or higher, get one. Oh, wow. Although I don't think Jen could have done it anyway. Yes, she could have. Yes, she could have. I didn't pay attention to that. Jen originally. Nope. Okay, it didn't matter. It would have been a five. If we if we if Jen could have got her defense up to a six, she would have gotten a uh, an, an instant prestige. Didn't matter anyway. So goes out, doesn't do any damage, and gets totally killed. Uh, because needed to have four defense, only had two, means the paladin is no more. Bye bye. Okay, so Jen gets no victory points. Although, she, again, she made more money than me, so she's not feeling too bad about all of that. So, um, too bad, so sad. The Paladin, the Holy Symbol is done. The Paladin is going to stick around, but um, we are going to get a new hero in town. It's a Demon Slayer. Okay, oh, by the way, and since neither of our heroes were able to hit the restless ghosts, um, you know, if if we if we had, if either of them had, it would have put a marker down. As soon as two markers are down in a two-player game, the ghost is toast, uh, as you might imagine. However, neither of them did it. But in a case where nobody successfully does damage to the monster ravaging the town, one damage is done because you have to assume, hey, I'm all of them working together, even if they were drunk or whatever, at least did one point of damage. So that was one. One more hit and the Restless Ghost will be dead and we'll move on to the level two. But the Restless Ghost is going to stick around, as does the Cleric. Now this Demon Slayer comes in. She's rich as well. She also has 25 bucks. And you might think, oh no, the Cleric is broke. Look down here. If the Restless Ghost had been defeated, uh, that, uh, any heroes involved would have gotten 20 bucks. They weren't. So uh, the, the Cleric, while going out to fight, somehow rustled up 10 gold. So the cleric has 10 to go shopping in the next round. The demon slayer is rich at 25 bucks. And, um, right. So surviving heroes recollect their rewards. Uh, you know, all the guards are gone, so they're now reset. And, um, you know, we got our points. And finally, the last step every round is upgrading time. Uh, the player who has the quest token. Remember, I said there is a big advantage for having the quest token. I get first dibs on upgrades to my shop. There's always upgrading our display and upgrading our storage. And uh, we're playing a two-player game, so we're going to draw two more. Actually, I think that's any player count. We always draw two more. We've got a marketeer and a city guard. Okay. So, I get first dibs. And the interesting thing, the city guard and the marketeer don't cost anything. The uh, the display upgrade costs 10. The storage upgrade costs 10. Which means I'm throwing a point away to get those, but I'll have them for the rest of the game. Now, what the display and the storage upgrade do, well, it says very clearly on them, in a future turn, if I have a display upgrade, I can put two items in my window. Uh, which means I won't be able to sell them, but I will have a much better shot at getting first dibs on what hero I want to come to my shop. The storage upgrade is, at the end of the turn, you get to store one item. But if I have a storage upgrade, I could store two. Now, these can be upgraded as well to become level twos later on, so they get even better, again, if you want to spend more money. So I could get those. I'm only going to buy one thing. Do I want those, or do I want to save my money and recruit a marketeer for free or a city guard for free? I probably. Let's see, that marketeer, after the display is revealed, I can add one item from my hand to the display. So I, I've got an extra little something up my sleeve to draw the right people to my shop. The city guard, prevent the ability of the current monster card from affecting you. Oh, I totally forgot, folks. Uh, always watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on. The Restless Ghost had an ability. After the adventure step, each player must pass one random card from their hand. Um, oh, to the player to the right. Okay, so I've totally forgot about this. Jen had to give me the nunchucks, and I had to give her one of mine randomly, because the Restless Ghost was a poltergeist and messed with us. I ended up throwing away my ice scroll, and I kept my steel sword. So that was the effect. So a city guard can prevent that from happening, in case you held on to something that you didn't want to disappear, because of poltergeist. Okay. Um, I like this marketeer. I'm going to hire him, and he comes over here and my employees. Now, if another marketeer comes out later on, I cannot hire another one. You can only have one of any of these upgrade cards. And now, as soon as that's done, a new one comes out, and it's another marketeer. Oh, come on. I know I shuffled this stuff. I want to show you guys some more business. Let's see something other than a marketeer or a city guard. Hey, it's a smuggler. Now, this guy costs five to hire, and at the end of the supply phase, draw three cards from the item deck, discard two, and then, ooh, that's very nice. But he only works 
once. So turn five bucks into an extra card that can be tailor-made for the uh, customer you're planning on. Jen says, yeah, I'll hire that dude. So there goes uh, some of her profits from the last round. Okay. And then we've got an Alchemist. Okay, and of course more players would go as it is. And now the last thing we do after the upgrade is storage. Um, so, this my Ice Scroll is no longer on display. Here's what I have. Since I did not upgrade my storage, I get to keep one of these three cards and toss the other two. This Demon Slayer likes magic stuff, so likes the Ice Scroll. The Nunchucks, he likes it. The Steel Sword, she likes. So, there's none of these that work for both of these characters. The Steel Sword, though, I sell for 10. I'm going to hold on to that. I don't even think this is mine. I think I got it from Jen. So these are gone. And um, Jen still has her Longbow, still has her Ice Scroll. She will hold on to that. Although nobody... Yeah. No, okay. This Demon Slayer would like that Longbow. She'll say goodbye to the Ice Scroll. And so, those are in her hand. This is what we have stored. And at the end of the first round, I made one more point. But Jen made more money, and she's got a, arguably a much more powerful employee than I do. Okay, and they're both one-time uses. And so, we go on to round two. Since this ghost isn't done, these two are going to fight. We once again go through the draft. And after the draft is over, we can add what we stored. I mean, we, this is not part of our hand until after the draft is over. And so I'm looking at another holy symbol for Mr. Cleric. An ancient relic. Oh, this is nice because either of them will take that. This And it's, oh, it's super attractive as well. This is probably what I'm going to take. But we've got a blasting rod. Uh, the Demon Slayer will take that. Plus three attack. Nice. And some more scale mail. And meanwhile, Jen drew uh, a fine cloak plus one defense. A uh, healing potion with a special power on it. If the hero is taken out, shuffle it back in the hero deck instead of discarding. Nice. Uh, a spiked gauntlet and a chain vestment. All right. So we would now do the draft again. We would then uh, set displays, try to attract the right people, sell them stuff, and go through the process. Once the Restless Ghost is defeated, we move on to a Shadow Knight. And after the Shadow Knight is defeated, the last one is a Demon Prince. Okay, so as you might imagine, things get tougher and tougher. But hey, we get more and more employees and more and more upgrades. So hopefully we get better and better at selling more and more stuff to these heroes in um, ah, uh, Bargain Quest. And that is the rundown, folks. As for my final thoughts, this is a sharp game. I can see it being a really nice, I wouldn't call it quite a gateway, but a gateway plus. It's a nice introduction to card drafting and whatnot. Uh, you know, it's pretty easy to see what all the ramifications of your choices are and make informed decisions, but there is a fair amount of randomness. Now, the interesting thing is, I should have mentioned this as I went, the, uh, what do you call them? The, the usual things. Oh, unlucky. Minus one attack. Minus one. I mean, this is murder. That character's going to die. Or they're calm. Not plus one, minus one. They're brave. Plus one attack. Intrepid. They do make ten more bucks. Hopefully they survive. Uh, they're nervous. They're lucky. Uh, this hero gets five um, bucks and a plus one. So there is a huge, huge amount of swinginess to these things. These things can win or lose the game totally based on luck. If one player constantly gets lucky draws for their chosen hero and the other player constantly gets unlucky. Which is why there is a variant where you call dependable heroes where you just take these out. They are not part of the game and it becomes much more deterministic. I would strongly recommend playing that way because these... I'll just say it. These suck. Uh, these basically make this game so swingy. Um, victory comes down. Not completely. There's still smart decisions to make. They're still trying to control the quest marker, get the right employees. But these, I mean, if I am constantly getting minus one, minus ones, and you're constantly getting plus two, plus twos, you're going to win the game. Period. And so these are unfortunate. Not really crazy about them. And so, it's good that it's an option, and we played it that way, and we thought the game was much, much nicer. That said, there is another big bit of swinginess. Um, when we're doing the upgrades, the weird thing... I don't understand why this is. I would think it would have been much better to say, hey, you know what? Um, the number of players, that's how many items come out, or something based on that. And whoever is first, which means they didn't get their choice of hero. So they got kind of shafted. So what should happen is, hey, they get first dibs, and after they buy something... It doesn't refill. So, because right now, it you know, you know, maybe I don't want either of these. Maybe I'm just not that excited about getting them. 
Maybe I'll just even, you know, but I'll buy one anyway because, hey, it's free. And then, oh, it refills immediately, and whoever got first dibs on their hero suddenly gets the exact thing they need. The exact thing they need. And that's another big swingy thing. I don't understand why they don't refill at the end of the round instead of as you go, because this can be a big swingy element as well. Not as much as these. I mean, I'm not saying that the uh, refilling shop as you go, but it, just, it, it didn't really sit quite well with me and Jen because... You know, if you worked really hard, gave up your best thing to display, but you still lose that, you don't get the person you want, and therefore you can't sell the stuff you drafted for, but you thought you were going to get it, um, hey, at least you get this, at least you get the bonus of first dibs, but you might not even get the best thing that comes out in a given round because they refill as they go. So, there's a handful of little things like that that just kind of don't sit as well um, with me and Jen as Bargain Quest. It means it's not a keeper for us. But, um, again... I can see this being a sweet, charming, great little Gateway Plus style way to introduce drafting. Uh, you know, certainly the thematic elements are here. It's funny. Um, if you don't mind swinginess, those, uh, you know, those luck cards, they can really make for some memorable moments as well. Oh, one other thing I'll mention also that kind of disappointed uh, me and Jen a little bit is the draft. I have played so many card drafting games now that do cool, interesting things for two-player variants to make drafting a bit more exciting. Bargain Quest doesn't do any of that at all. Um, like, you know, hey, draft and keep two so the draft becomes a lot more interesting. Or, um, you know, the uh, the Entwife variant uh, that was introduced with uh, Among the Stars. There are so many cool two-player drafting ways to go, and um, Bargain Quest just doesn't do that. Bargain Quest plays it pretty straight, which means, to me, it cares a lot more about the multiplayer experience, where it's going to work a lot better. It still works well as a two-player game, especially if you play the heavier richier thing, where um, there are four heroes that come out and players are drafting six cards, but that means you're still doing the kind of ho-hum, not particularly interesting draft. If it were six cards and you're drafting two per turn, or just there's lots of different things you can do, I think that would have been a lot more interesting. Um, don't get me wrong, though. Uh, this is just us. Bargain Quest, it turns out, is a hugely popular game. Very well loved. It's had several expansions come out. A couple of really big, successful Kickstarter campaigns. So there's a lot of love out there in the world for Bargain Quest. So don't use Jen's and my subjective opinion. It wasn't quite for us for a few solid reasons, but we can't deny we were very, very charmed by this sweet little drafting game, Bargain Quest. And that's the rundown, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye-bye.